Dungeon and Gravestone may not be the most elegant of names for a game, especially considering there's most definitely more than one Gravestone, but don't let that detract you from what is a surprisingly deep and satisfying dungeon crawler. So Dungeon and Gravestone is a roguelike. It's pretty hardcore, but not completely full on. So you are a skeleton dude who's dead. I mean, who would have thought it? He lands in a sort of purgatory kind of town, and without much fanfare, you are tasked with jumping into the dungeon and trying to get to the bottom. If you die, you lose everything that you picked up at that point. Thankfully, you don't lose what you already had back at home base, and your equipment is saved too, which probably makes things more bearable for newcomers. But boy, do I love the tension of losing your badass sword. I mean, there's nothing more wonderfully soul-destroying. The game is grid-based, but in real time, which does take away an essence of tactics, but ramps up the tempo. Thinking time is short, and so mistakes are more easily made. Once you've found a bit of equipment, you have an attack and a defensive stand, which, as much as I try to make viable, it just seemed to be better to move out of the way. I don't know. Every time you enter the dungeon, the floors are randomly generated, but this is done in a great way here. Somehow, despite everything being randomized, there's still puzzles to solve. Basic stuff like lever hitting, crate pushing onto buttons, and also creating platforms on water. Due to the random nature, they're never taxing on your brain, as they have to be simple enough for it to actually work. But I am still impressed they manage more than just narrow corridors with empty rooms, like most games of this style. You have a few items at your disposal to help out, either in attack or puzzle solving. For example, you'll occasionally have to fire arrows through doors to hit the switch on the other side. I also love that in case you don't fancy picking up a key for a locked door, like maybe it's in a room full of tough monsters, you can just drop a bomb and blow the wall up. I love it. But you may happen upon a secret room once in a while, which are not randomly generated, purposefully made dungeons, and for the most part, balls hard. You generally only have one chance to do it. If you mess up, like pushing a crate a bit too far or in the wrong order and blocking off a path, that's it. No rewinding, no resetting, you're balls up, now own it. You have to teleport out and hope the next time you stumble upon that room, you'll do it right. I like it because it also rewards you with great items. One tough feature is that of your blood. You constantly leak blood as you're walking around and always need to replenish it either via blood potions or fountains of blood that hang around every floor. This kind of acts like a timer, a bit of added pressure that I know people don't like, but it's just a replacement for the usual hunger mechanic in the mystery dungeon games. And it's very rarely a threat. I only lamented my lack of attention to improving it once I reached the first boss and realized how important it was going to be. Now, you'll definitely get stuck on the first boss, no question, so there's a bit of a hurdle to get through, a bit of grinding required for money, for parts, for better equipment that you can enhance, and also LP, which you can use on the, well, I hesitate to call it a skill tree, it's more like a skill radiator. I need to work on that analogy. Once you get to this point and you start dedicating yourself to improvement and knowing what you want to do and where you want to be, you'll definitely feel yourself becoming stronger and the once difficult ogres become almost nothing. You'll be blitzing through the floors no problem, well, until you get to the second boss, at which point you'll rinse and repeat. One of the best things and worst things about this game is its secretiveness. We all love figuring out games for ourselves and the hidden mechanics, especially in this genre, and this is fully in play here. Wondering what this does, what that's for, how to get over there. I love the fact that this game tells you jack and you have to piece it together yourself from the handful of hints that the NPCs will give. And I even asked the developer for a little bit of clarification on a couple of points and he's just like, no, I'm not telling you. <laughs> Fine, I'll do it myself then. I love it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the first thing you're going to be wondering is why the town keeps expanding and then sometimes will go back to its original form. And in all honesty, after 20 hours of gameplay, I still don't know what this stat means. I have no idea. It's, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. There's loads of obscure stuff to this game and I honestly really like it, even though I'm sure a lot of people won't. I don't know. I guess it comes with the territory of enjoying this genre. Now it is worth noting that this was entirely made by one dude, well pretty much, which yes, you know, you look at the graphics and may think, well of course, but actually there's a surprising amount of depth here and you can see that the person who made this has a deeper understanding of the genre and the mechanics that go into it and what makes it good. It's not perfect, it does have its issues like some cheap shots here and there, a slightly cumbersome inventory system, and perhaps being a little too vague for its own good at times. I think it could have done with like another person being in the room and saying, hang on, how about this? You know, but with feedback, hopefully it may improve in the future. And hopefully they can work on the English, which is a little bit ropey at best, but in a charming sort of way. In fact, don't change it. I like it. 
The music is alright, it's not too bad, the intro music isn't so beautiful, but in-game it's very solid. It doesn't distract or get repetitive amongst the repetitive gameplay. It doesn't enhance the repetitiveness of it, which is all I ask for in these games. The visuals, I know many of you will be immediately dismissive of the voxel nature, and I was initially hesitant to, but once you're in-game, it's actually fine, you get used to it, and there's a bit of charm to it. They could have gone with like a run-of-the-mill pixel art, but they went bold with the voxels, and it's fine. It grew on me a lot. And you may be thinking that this game looks kind of familiar, and that's because it was made by the same dude as BQM, Block Quest Maker, another import exclusive that I mentioned from time to time. For the price, Dungeon and Gravestone is $24.99 in the US, 20 euros and 18 pounds. Firstly, it is refreshing to see the prices lined up so equally for a change. Personally, you know, I don't think that's too bad. I mean, you look at Shirin the Wanderer, and depending on the region, that's either a bit cheaper or about the same. So yeah, I think Dungeon and Gravestone could have been a little bit cheaper to entice people in more. I think if it was $20, 15 pounds, that would have been spot on for me, but don't get me wrong, I'd have definitely got my money's worth paying that price. Don't let the looks deceive you. It's a well-made game, and if you're into Japanese roguelikes, then I think you don't have too much to worry about. It's only available digitally in the West, but if you're into physical games, maybe you're a collector or you enjoy owning your games properly, then in Japan, this is getting a physical release around August time, and that physical release will have English and Polish. For some reason, it has Japanese, English, and Polish for 0.9% of our audience. Witamy! Google Translate told me that's welcome in Polish. So yeah, if you want a physical release of this, then down below in the description and pinned comment, I've popped links below as to where you can pre-order a physical copy for yourself. If you use those links, you also massively help support the Switch Watch team at the same time. Honestly, ever so much. Plus, in return, you can get a super 5% off any physical item if you use our links and then use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out for 5% off any physical item. And I did double check with the developer who said that there is no Western physical coming, at least not one that's currently planned. Overall, look, I imagine this kind of game is not going to be for everyone, but if you enjoy games such as Shirin the Wanderer, Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, but want a slightly more obscure and faster paced version, then Dungeon and Gravestone is a fine option. If this genre is not your bag, or if you're not sure if it is or not, then play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon first to find out. If you're not into these games, then do not go for this. As much as I like it, I can't recommend it for everyone. The fact that it was practically made by one dude, has lots of secrets, a tangible progression of your character and skills, yet remaining tough, I like it. I wish it was a smidge cheaper digitally, but I almost always say that. I'm giving it a very commendable 7 out of 10. Alright, many thanks for watching. If you watched all the way through, you are a legend. The longer you watch, the more it helps us grow. Apparently, Polish people only watch two and a half minutes. Come on, guys, what are you doing to us? That is not so legendary. But if you do watch all the way through, then let me know. Give me, um... <laughs> <laughs> give me a little Polish flag emoji in the comments so I know who you are and I'll give you one back. Big thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Room, Organica, Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, Alexander Cato, J Cross 7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Michael Del Polito, Cigar Trucker. Thank you ever so much for your support. Check out some of our other content. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.